Okay, so now let's revisit the single slit, but as we alluded to before, let's make the single slit wide enough such that it's wider than a few wavelengths of light, such that you can get multiple radiators in here that can then start to radiate in all directions and we can look for interference points. And so, you know, again, if we had, like we talked about before, if we had an infinite sheet all the way out here of these radiators, then the net effect is that you would just get plane waves that are traveling uniformly forward just like the ones behind here. But in this case, we've blocked this such that the radiators end here at the edges and we only have a couple of them. And so when you start to map these out and you look in the far field here, you'll see these where I drew these X's, these are where you start to have overlap of the peaks of the E fields and where you'd have constructive interference. In those points you would see light intensity maximas and in other points in between where, there, where there's not constructive interference, there's destructive interference, you would see dark spots. So you could see here in this simulation here where you've got it wide enough for a couple radiators, you could start to see strong constructive interference, then this gray blurry area is destructive interference, and then a little bit more constructive, destructive, constructive. And so if I were to look out here, I would start to see something that would look like, you know, if I map the, uh, if I measured it right here, I would see low intensity, higher intensity, then I see a really high intensity here, then low intensity, high, and you start to see what would become what we'll call a diffraction pattern. So this is the famous single slit experiment. You don't need a slit. Any actually sharp edge will cause something similar, like the edge of a piece of paper or the metal on a semiconductor mask. Okay. And again, you have to have a certain width to see a pattern. If it's so small that you only have one radiator, then that one radiator just goes in all directions like this. So you don't get diffraction. And then when you get to the point where you have several radiators, then you can start to see here destructive, constructive, destructive, constructive interference patterns start to show up here. And again, here's your plane waves coming in here. So what's this look like in terms of the diffraction pattern you get? Well, here's my plane waves, here's my slit, here's the light after this. And when I start to observe this out here in the far field, meaning far from it, then this is a plot of intensity versus distance here. So you can see if you just map this with this, you get intensity peaks, minimas, and then a large zero mode in the middle. And so this is the zero mode, first mode, second mode, first mode, second mode, etc. Okay? This is an intensity plot. We will actually derive the formula for this when we do Fourier optics, but we're not going to do it now because you can't derive it without the Fourier transform. So if I looked at this in terms of what this would look like on a, uh, on a white card, in a dark room it would look something like this. Here's my maximum in here in the center and then here's these these other lobes here which are dimmer. And if I want to be able to predict the spacing what I can do is I can basically go from the center of the maximum to the center of the first dark fringe here, use some simple trig to calculate that angle and I can relate that angle theta, the sine of that angle theta, to the wavelength of light and the width of the slit W. So that gives me a way to calculate uh, theoretically what the slit width is by observing the diffraction pattern. And you'll do that this week. You'll look at the diffraction pattern, you'll calculate these things, and then you'll back calculate the width of the slit. Here's two diffraction patterns. So at this point you should be able to start to figure out what these are for. So the first one, what's, what do you think this is for? Notice how it's going out in all directions here. Well, this would be for something which would be a radial slit. So if I had a slit which is big enough like this to allow a couple radiators and then everything, all the area out here is opaque. Okay, I'm doing the best I can to draw this. Okay, and I shine light through this thing. This circular sit, slit would give me a diffraction pattern like this. Okay, what about this? I've got diffraction this way and this way. This is a rectangular slit. And I can tell, and this is part of your review question this week, that the rectangular slit is oriented this way. So let me color all this in. So this is the dark areas where you don't let light through. Okay. So there's my slit. Light comes through here. And the reason I can tell the long way is up is because if you look at this formula here, okay, the wider your slit gets, okay, 
then the closer the spacing will be between the fringes. So if this is the long ways, I get the fraction from these edges here, this is my width essentially in this direction, closer space to fraction pattern. Where the rectangular this way, my width is smaller, I get bigger angles according to this equation and wider spaced to fraction pattern. So I can tell already off this what, how the uh, rectangle is oriented. Now, you have to be careful, when we measure diffraction patterns, we measure them in what's called the far field, meaning far away from the slit. So let's look at a little bit closer what happens closer to the slit itself. So let's assume we have a slit width of 2A. So this is the width 2A, and this shaded area here, this is just the, showing the original width of the slit. So it's not the actual laser beam. The laser beam's coming here, and this is just helping me map out the original width of the slit there. Okay? The dashed line here shows the Fraunhofer diffraction pattern, and that's the one we've been talking about thus far. So this is the one that gives us the diffraction pattern I talked about on the previous slide, and they call that the Fraunhofer diffraction pattern. This does not appear until the far field. You have to get pretty far out before this appears. So if you try to put a white card and observe it really closely, you wouldn't see that. Closer to the slit, you'll see the more complex Fresnel diffraction pattern, which is much more complicated. We're not going to discuss it or measure it. It's, it's much more difficult to do. But if you look really close here, so this is the example here, you would see the intensity profile look like this. You go a little bit further away, further away yet, and you can see eventually it starts to form the Fraunhofer diffraction pattern that we talked about on the previous slide. So you ask, well, okay, what's far away? If I go into the lab today and I, want to, and I want to measure this, I want to make sure I'm far enough away to see the Fraunhofer diffraction pattern. Well, you basically want to go to an NF of 0.1 or less. And you can calculate that the Fresnel number as A squared, which is the uh, half width of the uh, slit, okay? So it's 2A is the total width of this slit, so it's the radius of the slit of the slit the wavelength of light, and D is your distance here from the, um, from, the, uh, from the slit, and that gives you your Fresnel number. And you'll find in this week's lab, you're more than far enough away to have a very small Fresnel number to see the Fresnel, uh, the Fraunhofer diffraction pattern. Now, we can also do not one slit, but two slits. And so then we would have radiators that are coming out in this direction and this direction and they could start to have interference and you can see that here and this is actually not for light this is a water wave tank so they basically have some blocks here and a wave tank here's the water waves coming in and you can see as they emerge here these beautiful diffraction lines you get in a wave tank so that's kind of cool that you see wave theory applies to any kind of wave you would expect you get the same thing with sound waves right it's all interference with waves this is the uh, diagram from the famous Young's double slit experiment. This is the drawing in 1803 from Thomas Young he did, where he showed if you had two radiators in a uh, double slit, the interference patterns you might see as you move out in distance further away from the slits. Again, let's compare a single slit and a double slit. So if I single slit, the diffraction pattern looks like this. Here's the first mode, dark spot, second, and the th other ones get pretty dim. For the double slit, you'll notice that you're going to see a, um, something that looks kind of like single slit, but it's also going to be broken up into diffraction patterns within that. And so how do I measure this? Well, what I'll do is I'll go in here and I'll look at the spacing between these dots. That'll give me a delta theta, the angle here. So what's the angle between each of these? It's about the same, and I call that delta theta. And that's equal to the wavelength of light I'm using in the experiment divided by the width, which is the width between the slits. Not the width of the slits, but rather the width between the two slits, as you see here. Okay? And of course, um, theta is in radians, and if I have small theta, then I can simplify this as follows, getting rid of the, uh, the, the trigonometry needed to calculate theta, and I can just say that D, the space between the fringes here, so the separation from peak to peak or valley to valley, is equal to L, the distance from the slit to the fringes. So that means from the, the, the slit here, the distance to the screen where you observe it, and divided by W, which is the spacing between the slits. Okay? There's a nice derivation of, of how you get this theoretically at this website. I'm not going to go through it. 
and it again assumes small angle approximations and units of radians. And again, this week you just measure delta theta angles from dark band or to light bands, and that'll help you predict the width between the, the slits using this formula here. So at that point, take another break and uh, first go through some of this review, including this question, which I gave you everything you need for at this point to be able to answer.